So um, PPD stands for Personal and Professional Development. And of course, uh, let us all begin with bacaan surah Al-Fatiha. So, when you first stepped into day one as a student in the medical school, wherever you may have been, I think we all aspire to become good doctors. And we talk, when we talk about good medical practice, it's all about making sure that your patients okay, are entitled to good standards of practice and care from you, their doctors. Essential elements of this are professional competence, good relationships, not only with the patients, but actually with the caregivers. Okay, I just add that caregivers play a very important role and relationship with your colleagues, whether it is your uh, medical colleagues or the allied health colleagues, uh, you must maintain good uh, working partnership and relationship for the patient's sake. And all of this is done with observance of professional ethical obligations. So in medical practice, remember this course is called personal and professional development. So when we talk about professionalism, professional competence is the habitual and judicious use of number one, communication, knowledge, which you are going to gain over the next four years, technical skills with regards to your, your field of expertise, clinical reasoning, emotions, values, and of course, you will need to reflect every now and then and every now and then in your daily practice for the benefit of the individual and the community that is being served. What about personal development? When we talk about personal development, it's about increasing self-awareness. We like to empower you in the sense of attaining uh, soft skills, be it from critical thinking, decision making, coping strategies, team bonding, communications, and the list is actually endless. So just to give you an overview of this course, the PPD course actually has been here with us in UKM for a few years. But this year, we have consolidated this program so that you will have a more meaningful uh, experience. And the overall objective of this course is to produce graduates with high moral values and ethical principles and professionalism in keeping with the practice of medicine. I just like to remind all candidates or students here that this is a compulsory course and you will be assessed throughout your entire four years and it is in the form of a continuous assessment. And uh, you will go through this with your uh, supervisors. And I'm sure uh, they would have briefed you or will brief you in more detail about this within your own uh, programs. What about the course learning outcome? In general, there are three. Firstly, to demonstrate effective communication, good interpersonal skills, and acknowledging the presence of diversity amongst your patients, caregivers, and also all the people around you, your various health professionals. So there are various uh, areas here, as you can see, and we will try our best to address all of these areas throughout your entire uh, journey with us over the next four years. And the second learning outcome is to instill the values of integrity, accountability, and care for, again, uh, patients beyond your own needs, okay? Including the relationship amongst the community and health professionals. And finally, the third learning outcome is to integrate the principles of medical ethics, leadership, organizational ability, digital literacy, because I think we all now live in the digital world. And with this uh, current pandemic, a lot of us have to now resort to probably doing teleconsult and so on. So I think we need to be a bit more aware about this. And of course, once again, uh, to integrate reflection skills in a transparent manner so as to enhance personal development because medicine is all about lifelong learning. So I think if you were to just even Google professional development, you will see that this is embedded in many colleges and in the General Medical Council in the UK. Traditionally, when we talked about uh, medical education, we've always used the term CME. 
Now, CME actually is uh, referred to as being episodic. It is more uh, teacher driven, right? And it is mainly encompassing the clinical domain and it is rather passive and it's uh, uh, more mainly conducted in lecture halls or conference rooms. So that is what's been known as CME. But now we move forward, right? And we are now talking about CPD, right? So when we talk about CPD, it's all about lifelong learning based on self-assessments. They are continuous. Uh, why do you need this? This is to address the educational needs of uh, the individuals. And as opposed to CME, CPD is generally learner-centered, okay? It is uh, centered uh, uh, on, on you, okay? And it is more comprehensive. It just doesn't talk about clinical domains. It now encompasses other areas such as management, leadership, administration, education, yeah? scholarship, okay? And an entire spectrum of professional activities. So I think when you were house officers, you do realize when you work on day one, uh, whether you're probably still very green, right? But like it or not, the nurses will look up to you and ask for some uh, directions or orders because you are already uh, looked on, upon as a leader. So we'd like to help enhance this quality in you uh, throughout these four years and certainly beyond, okay? And in addition to all this, right? When you talk about CPD, it is a variety of learning format. It is an active form of learning and it is conducted in a variety of venues. It could be by the bedside, okay, and it could be beyond just the lecture halls, okay. So why is it so important? Because there's a lot of new technology, new techniques, so you need to be up to date. And with um, accessibility to the society, right, because everything is now digitalized, everything is on the internet, the public reads a lot more, they are more knowledgeable, as such, the, societies, the society has an increased expectation of the medical profession. And the public healthcare system has also become more complex. And you now surely are aware that you don't just work alone. We, we never work in silos, okay? Or rather, we shouldn't work in silos, okay? There, we need to always emphasize multidisciplinary teamwork. And that involves uh, your other colleagues, the other allied health professionals, right? Nurses, dietitians, therapists, okay? And other uh, administrators, eh? whether it's the health authority or the administrators at the hospital in where you are uh, being placed at, okay? So you also need to know that there is globally, there is increasing mobility of both patients and healthcare professionals. So you always need to be up to date, right? So when we talk about the personal development plan, if you were to search under the, any of the colleges or academy, you will find this uh, phrase, personal development plan. When you look at this, a lot of them will focus on clinical. But here in this PPD course, we like to focus on the non-clinical aspects. And again, I've highlighted this, we're talking about advocacy, leadership, professionalism, interpersonal communication skills, and so on and so forth. And remember, always, okay, um, you, you must be wanting to receive feedback because uh, feedback, and, and we hope feedback is always given constructively, okay, uh, that helps you grow. It helps you reflect and see what you have done uh, wrong, maybe, maybe sometimes it's unintentional, okay. So it gives you the opportunity for you to reflect when you receive feedback. So both of these are actually essential. And I'd like to end my brief talk, okay? Remember, this is a quote by Hippocrates. Cure sometimes, treat often, comfort always. So please do remember that it is always more important to know the patient that has the disease rather than the disease that the patient has. Thank you.